Yep, battery still got some juice. I bought it with a locked up engine. Yeah, I bought this one. That oil is barely on the stick. It was ran out of oil. Welcome back to Rayleigh Small Indians. I'm T-Bone. This is your Get to the Point channel. Today, y'all get to decide what I do to fix this one. Hang around. So I'm going to give you guys a full breakdown of whatever parts this thing needs, if it's even repairable. And we're going to make a decision. If we're either going to rebuild this one or we're going to put a new engine on it. Y'all decide. For those of you that are going to ask, there are some people who don't know, how do I know this engine is locked up? Well, number one, the guy told me. And I'm going to tell you in a little bit how much you paid for this thing. Anyway, a quick diagnosis. You go here, adjust clicks. Single click, solenoid, no, okay? In this case, it's not. I've got a Just Clicks video you guys need to check out. Actually, there are two Just Clicks videos to tell you how to diagnose the electrical side. How do I know it's not hydro-locked, like the car better been leaking fuel in the crankcase? Well, number one, there ain't no oil in it, nothing. Number two, the flywheel don't move at all. If, say, your flywheel moves a little bit, first thing you need to do is pull that spark plug out and see if the gas coming out. If it is, you need to look at the carburetor. A quick, simple test of the solenoid. I'm going to put my test light right here on this starter bolt and turn this key, listen, and watch this light. We are sending power. Now, if you're unsure, there's another case, too. Sometimes that starter will get hung up in the flywheel. Okay, and you can actually pull this cover off, jiggle, jiggle, squirt a little stuff on that uh, starter gear, and if they go back down, you might go back to working. That ain't happening in this case. Now, y'all seen my zero turn that we use for our yard. The reason I wanted this one is we've got a bunch of woods with trails, and I want to use this as a beater to go out there that I don't care about, and I can go cut my trails, make them clean. So let's get this engine off of here. Tear it down and see what's wrong. And we'll give you a breakdown of the parts cost and a breakdown of how much a new engine is going to cost. <laughs> Action. <laughs> Daggum thing about ran over me. Let's get this engine off real quick, y'all. Ain't got no fuel shut off, so I'm going to clamp the fuel line. Let's get the fuel off. There's only three things on this side. Just a fuel line. Thank goodness it's got a Walbro style, not a Nikki. That's nice. And a little breather hose here. And a throttle cable. Yes, yeah, dirty. Back that off. Nothing in here but a little Z bend. So all we're going to do, pop that out. Now, on this side, all we got is two things to take loose. Now, we're going to take the starter loose and the wiring harness. Uh, well, that wasn't very tight. Ooh, that one's already wiggling in there. Huh. All right, keep that in mind, folks. Do we need a starter? Let's hope not. Pull our wire loose. But we know it worked. We heard it click earlier. And then the other thing we need to do is just this one wiring harness. You'll notice I didn't pull anything. I didn't unplug the carburetor. You don't have to. And that's it. Now, in this case, this muffler, um, a lot of times you'll have to take them off if this pipe is welded into the muffler. In this case, we don't. So now what you want to do, yeah, I got it up in there so you guys can see what I'm doing. But next thing you want to do is set this parking brake just like that to loosen your drive belt. Now lower your deck down. Wow. Well, this thing's been sitting for months in the yard because we were busy all summer. Well, let's get this deck down and out of the way. First thing we want to do, let's get this little clip out of the way. Let's take our belt off around here, around here, and get the deck down. Now, if you're doing this at home on the ground, what you're going to want to do is take that deck off, get it out of your way. It'll be a lot easier. Ow! 
that was in there, wasn't it, y'all? Now we're gonna pull this, and we still got our drive belt hook going. You see my finger there, and I'm just gonna walk this belt off. Now there's four bolts. One, two, three, four. Let's take them out. Hold your ears, I forgot to tell you. I'll never find that one again. There it went. Two more under here. And two front bolts. Now watch y'all. Y'all don't let the engine fall off. Ha 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 ha. Okay, let's get this deck back up. Now we got to do, let's get this bad boy off of here. There it is. Okay, so there's a real common problem. We're draining this oil out of this engine, but I want you to look right here. This is, well, it popped off. You know, this is your twist, twist and pull off. The real common problem with engine leaks on these engines, watch. Just with my finger, see, I can turn that. These are all loose. Tighten yours up. All right, let's get this thing tore down right quick. See what's wrong with it. Now, one more thing. You'll notice there's a long shoulder and a short shoulder. The two long shoulders go in the back of the engine, short shoulder in the front. All right, air filter. Because, ooh, that's dirty. There's a little screw right down in here on some models. And pop the cover off. All right, let's get this dipstick out of the way. And our spark plug. We need our tailpipe. Muffkin, muffler, piece of metal out of the way so we can get the head bolts. Now this bracket, just like that. Go ahead and loosen these. I got the gun in my hand already. Our intake and carburetor assembly. Alright, spark plug wire out of the way. A little five in one tool works good for this. That way you don't bend up your uh, valve cover. Kind of cuts that sealer. See right there. And now let's get this cylinder head off. Another one. Yep, one more. Now, there's push rods. Want we'll to be careful you don't lose these caps. All right, let's stand her up. Just like of that. And let's get this cover off. Uh, you can see metal all down in there or just like a silver looking. All right, there's our governor. Teeth look good. Camshaft. This one still has a good compression release. You know how often these tear up. Get us a little pig mat under here. Absorb some of that oil. So we are stuck with the piston at the top. 
and I need to get these the rod bolts loose, uh, the rod cap bolts loose up there. So what I'm going to do is put this bolt. So we're going to use a, a wrench on this and tap that piston and try to get this thing to rotate down where we can get our bolts. All right, there it went tight. So I could use the brass end, but I'm gonna try the wooden end first. Boy, it's stuck. Well, plan B, let's see if I can loosen the one I can get to and then try that. Ooh, that wasn't even hardly tight. That was pretty loose. Cause I don't know, I was kind of thinking it would be the rod cooked onto the crankshaft. It may be some of that and the piston stuck. I don't know. But we're going to find out. It's going to come apart one way or the other. There's one bolt. Now, this is not going to fit up in there. So, let's try this again. Y'all cross your fingers. Uh oh, here we go. We just popped loose. Look at there. Ha, 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 ha. Now, can I get it down enough? She's moving to where I can get my, there we go. I think I can get my ratchet in there now. Oh, maybe not. Let's try it right there. Oh yeah, that one's tight. <clears throat> yeah. Try and move this a little further. Cause my ratchet was gonna run out of room. This is gonna take a minute. Hey, while we're doing this, why don't y'all go ahead and click that subscribe button? Maybe, maybe a little thumbs up or something. Y'all be thinking about it now. Whether we are gonna replace this or rebuild it. I don't see any holes in the block. Yeah, it's got to have a rod for sure. Boy, it just melted this thing. Oh my goodness. So let's see if we can get this around. I don't know if I can get it around where I can get that piston up. Let's see if I can get me a screwdriver in here. Oh, it went up some. It's going to get hung up there. Can we get this thing up now? Come on, it's coming. There it is. Whoop, there it is. Look at that piston skirt. Oof. So let me get this crankshaft to get the raw journal up to the top and let y'all look at this. So y'all look at the raw journal. See if I can get my finger in there. Oh my goodness, that's bad. I mean, rough bad. Cylinder's not terrible. 
Well, let me go get some prices together here and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm about to reveal the prices I found. I want to show you a couple of issues. This connector for the counterweight is aluminum. Both of those would possibly have to be replaced uh, along with the crankshaft unless I can get this out and get that cleaned up, okay? Then I've got another issue over here on the starter. Now, the starter did have a nice hard click, but that is loose if I could fix that. So here it is right down the list. Okay, so crankshaft, piston and rings, rod, crankcase gasket, seal, head gasket. And these are all retail prices on here. If I can fix the crankshaft, 364, I also mentioned the starter. Oh, there's something else. Uh, possibly carburetor. Uh, maybe I can clean it. Maybe it's fine. Maybe I have to replace it. I don't know. So $552.85 or without the crank, $188. Or I can put a brand new engine on this thing and go cut my trails in the woods. $679. So there it is. You guys let me know what you think. Put your comments right down in the comments section. I want to know what you would do or what you think I should do. And we appreciate you tuning in to Rayleigh Small Lineage. I'm T-Bone, and this is your Get It to Point channel. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button, ring the bell, and give us a thumbs up. This is the end of part one. I'm going to come back in a couple weeks with part two. I got something special in store for you guys next weekend. Going to be different. T-ball sweating in the noonday heat.